He is the current reigning defending UFC bantamweight champion. He is the man who uh, we all want and hope will fight Piotr Jan next to unify those titles. He is the pride of Long Island, New York. He is the one and only, the funk master, Al Jermaine Sterling. He's back! Funk master. I'm back, baby. Aljo, we I went from being back. we went from being bitter enemies to now you being on the show three times in the past like month and a half. How about that? Well, you know what? The Bantamweight division is one of the hottest divisions, if not the hottest division right now. So I think everybody wants to know what's going on. That's right. And by the way, what about this camera that you got here? I mean, this is high quality stuff. This isn't your typical you webcam. Know. Hey, hey, nothing but the best, Ariel. <laughs> nothing but the best. Respect, respect. <laughs> so uh, inquiring minds want to know, Aljo. Number one, I'm assuming you watched the co-main event on Saturday, Piotr Jan, Corey Sanhagen. Of course, brilliant fight. Very, very brilliant fight from both guys. Okay, so tell me more. What did you think of the performance? What did you think of the fight? I'm assuming you scored it like everyone else for Jan, but let's go a little bit deeper. What did you think of the fight? What stood out? What stood out to me was the main things that Piotr Jan does very well is he keeps a very slow and steady pace and he's slowly but surely gets a little bit stronger as the guys start to deplete a little bit. Um, I felt like Corey, maybe that five and a half week preparation for that fight kind of played a, a factor in that. I mean, obviously not trying to take anything away from Jan, but it is a still short notice fight. You had him have a performance the way he did against TJ Dillashaw. And then he kind of slowed down relatively early in this one. Um, outside of that, I think he kind of stopped going to the body, stopped going to the leg kicks. And I think that didn't keep those were the cleanest shots that he was landing because Jan does a great job with his high guard defense, his high shell. He does a great job with the left hand parry and it's hard to get shots through that, that are actually meaningful. But if you keep that pace, you can't win a fight when you're on your heels and going backwards the whole time. you got to throw something, right? Mm -hmm. So I felt like him slowing down and him stop going to the body, him stop going to the legs, gave the opening for Jan to, to start to get stronger a little bit. But he tried to mix it up with the grappling and... You know, he's not a wrestler, but it, I don't know if that did him any favors. I think he might have committed a little too hard where he got stuffed in the in a sprawled out position where it kind of allowed him to take some shots that he didn't need to take. Um, but what Jan did well was stay composed, kept the constant pressure, kept coming back forward. And even though Corey made him miss a ton, he doesn't care. His output is always going to be the same. He's going to still keep coming forward and still trying to look to get you out of there if he can. You know, uh, a lot of high-level techniques, the spinning back fist to the overhand that dropped Corey. Um, I still don't know how he got hit with that. But, uh, you know, it's the fight game. When you caught in a moment, I think sometimes things that you normally don't get hit by kind of catches you by surprise, you know. So good performance, but still, I think there were some questions that was answered for me. And I'm I'm so excited to get back out there, man. I, I It was good to, to know who the true number two contender is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to lose to number one. And that's all that matters, baby. That's all that matters. I love it. So, so you talked about those questions. Like what, what, what did you, what did you find out? Well, for it, for, for one, the main thing is people were doubting my wrestling ability and making it seem like that was like a normal day in the gym for me in terms of how good I really am when I, when I apply pressure and try to get these guys down. I mean, if you look at my track record, I, I can't, I have to admit, I had to go back and watch again and look at my other fights to see, am I missing something here? Am I the one that's out of the loop on this one? And I really feel confident to know that, no, it wasn't that. To see that Corey was able to get him down the way he did, get on his back the way he did, it just gives me more confidence to know that, yes, I really did have an off night. And that's all it is. It's just an off night. He looked like the better wrestler. He looked like the better defensive wrestler in our performance back in March. He did what he was supposed to do. He took advantage of the situation. And I can't say anything about that other than I know the next fight is going to be completely different. And I'm very comfortable in my own skin to know that I'm confident enough that I know I'm going to beat this man. Do you think, like, so his last fight was against you. This was his first fight since. Do you think he got better? Were you impressed with him? Um, To say he got better, I, I think that's kind of hard to say. I mean, what are we measuring that against? His fight against me? I mean... Yeah. If that's what we're comparing it to, I mean, you could say that with the fight against Aldo, maybe, but it's kind of the same exact thing happened. He kind of started to fade a little bit, but the difference was Corey was able to go five rounds. I went 88 seconds with Corey. I, I think the proof, I mean, you can't do MMA math. Don't get me wrong. I'm not doing MMA math, but I'm just saying when I'm on, I'm a very dangerous guy to beat. And that's what makes me feel good about this fight. So yeah, Pideon probably got better. Maybe he got physically stronger or faster, but he still missed just as much. He still swings the, 
the hard shots he, he does just as well. He still plots the way he plots. The only adjustments I think he really did really good coming from that first round to the rest of the fight was he started to attack the body with those free, free body kicks that San Hagen was giving up. He took the free leg kicks. And I know San Hagen, the fight with TJ, was saying that, oh, the leg kicks didn't hurt. But, you know, they score, they do damage, and they add up. They accumulate. It's a fist fight. It's just like a, a, a energy bar meter. You know, you can't just keep taking those shots for free. You know, so he wasn't giving them anything to think about. And I think that's what Pideon did very, very well. And I love the highlight that he did, hitting him with a spinning wheel kick at the end of the fight, which I thought was very, uh, um, it was the irony in that, hitting him with the spinning wheel kick at the end to kind of put an exclamation point. I think that kind of burned Corey a little bit where he was like, I got to hit this mother, I got to hit this guy back. I got to get my hands back on this guy for trying to disrespect me like that. You know what I mean? So um, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like an island boy. Uh, I'm keep on going because I'm an island boy. <laughs> you are a legit island boy. I mean, representing Jamaica. I'm a legit one. The rest of us are just uh, posers. Um, did you find yourself rooting for Piotr because he wins? It's the big rematch. There's the bet. Like, did you feel like on the couch, wherever you were watching this, you were actually rooting for your rival? Yes and no. I, it, for me, it's kind of a weird relationship that we have. You know, he yes. blocked me on Instagram. I'm kind of sad about that. I'm oh, kind he of did? Piotr, you got to unblock me so I can talk shit to you. You know, you, oh. can't, you can't post shit. And then when I post it back, you get mad and then block me. Kind of feminine trait is that, right? When did that happen? Um, How long ago did that happen? Uh, right after I, I had to pull out of the fight. Oh, interesting. Okay. And he said, oh, I'm not wasting time on this clown anymore. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay. But, um. I, I, it's, it's a weird relationship again. And I think it's because I want to settle the business with him, whether it was for a title or not for a title, we were going to fight again. Eventually I told Shelby the same things like Shelby, Dana, I told these guys the same thing to their faces. We have to fight no matter what the score has to be settled. We have to know who the better guy is when we're both feeling the way we should be feeling. So we give the fans the fight that they deserve to see between number one and number two. And uh, with Corey, it's to see a guy come back from, you know, my loss, his loss to me, and then do what he's done to these other guys. It shows that he's a serious threat to this division still, you know? I mean, albeit he's come up short to the best of the best in this division, he's only fought the best guys, you know? So that kind of shows where he's at compared to everybody else, shows where Jan is at compared to everybody else, myself, TJ. And I think we're kind of setting the, the standard and, and, the, and the, the bar for everybody else to, to either play catch up or to do better. And that's a good thing. I think this division has the potential to do all that. With that being said, uh, I want to see him win or see San Hagen win. Like, either way, like, I didn't have any horse in the race. Regardless, the rematch between Corey and I was just enough of a big rematch. Me sleeping in the sand, man, coming back, doing what he did to all these guys, coming up short to TJ, getting a shot of redemption. There's a story there. And then having a chance to fight someone who put him out in the first round, you know, pretty much manhandled him in the first round, took him down like a little boy, jumped on his back, climbed his back like a tree and then choked him out unconscious, you know, put the same man to sleep. So either way, there's a storyline to be built with either fight. Um, with Piotr Jan, you got the guy who's dominating uh, from the pretty much uh, the third round and on to the foul happen. And, you know, we got an unconclusive finish to the, to the, to that fight, you know, so it, it has to be settled, you know, so I'm good with it either way. Because regardless, both fights were big to me. And as a champ, I get pay-per-view points now. So I don't care. Mm. All I care about is that the same thing I got into the sport from day one was to get paid, change my life, change my mom's life. And I've done that already. So now everything else is just icing on the cake. I got to change my camera. It just died on me. Oh, wow. I jinxed it. No problem. Do you want us to wait? No, 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 no. So oh, wow. I'm, I'm all good. That, wow, look at oh. you. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm a professional, Ariel. Come a on, Doug. It's a multi-cam shoot. <laughs> this is a multi-cam shoot right here, Aljo. So wait, you have the... That's fascinating. What what kind of camera do you have in front of your other camera? Yeah, it's a ZV-1. It's a Sony ZV-1, but the freaking batteries, they exhaust. And they just, uh, they just die. And you, you can know, just so switch. Not, you just go into your Zoom preferences and switch to your laptop camera or, whatever, or your desktop. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yep. That is amazing. Uh, well now done. we got downgrade on the quality. You know, the people uh, deserve the best. They I know. deserve the best. I know. This is where you do the uh, the podcast from, I presume. Yes, sir. The weekly scraps. The weekly scraps. Now, why? I, I notice you're in New York more these days. What happened to Vegas? Well, I've been in Vegas for all of October. The okay. only times I came back home was for the weekends. My brother fought, I think, the second week of October. We had some other guys fight at the Ring of Combat. This 
the third week of October. And then my fiance's birthday was just this past Thursday. And, um, you know, I had to, I, I'm jet lagged as hell. And then for this weekend, we have Ally Quinta fighting at the MSG. So I've just been back to back to back. So I'm staying home for a little bit. And then after this fight, I'm going back to Vegas, finish up that month of November with my PT, my strength and conditioning. And then from there, we're ready to go, man. We're, I told Shelby right after, right after that fight was done, I texted him and said, January or February, question mark. Like, you let me know. This is when I'll be ready to go. I'm feeling a lot better these days, especially with all the work I've been putting in. Um, really getting to focus on the uh, neurological side of everything to get my, my muscle atrophy to stop and all that. So um, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for the future. By the way, how did your, uh, your brother's fight go? He lost a, oh, it wasn't even a split. It was a unanimous decision. It was a close fight. He got taken down and he's still young. He's never wrestled, never did jujitsu until now at age, I think 28 is when he started. So he's still an amateur, but relatively green in terms of matches and understanding like fight nerves and how to use it for you and not against you. Cause he kind of zaps his energy in comparison to what he does in the gym, if that makes sense. Okay. So kind of fatigues a little quicker than he should. But he wants to make a career out of this. He's the funk monster. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, what weight? What weight? I'm the funk master. He's the funk monster. What weight? Uh, 135 also. Oh, my. Okay. Who yeah, wins? we're six months, six, six months apart. It's like six and a half months apart. Different moms. Same dad. Um, but yeah, so he's, he's in the gym all the time doing that. And uh, hopefully he can make that pro jump because I'm 32. He's obviously getting older, you know, so he wants to try to at least make some money and at least just try, you know, right. And that's all you can do is just try. Remind me again, how many siblings? Like 18, 19 or something? 20. 20. Including you? 21 including kids. me, I might be 21. Damn. That is, and where do That's you fall? A lot, man. Where do you fall in the, uh, the age? I'm like the seventh oldest in terms of all my brothers have. Yeah, yeah. All, yeah, yeah. So I'm like the seventh oldest. Seventh. So it was all the same dad, but different moms. Um, and my mom has 10. And two, and she had, and it's, yeah. And it's three dads in that picture. Um, my older sister, my older brother, and then she had the rest of the eight with my dad. Eight? So, she had 10 total? Yeah. My mom had 10 kids, yeah. Holy smokes. La the last ones were twins, man. Damn. Is she done? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Holy. Have you ever had a moment where all of you guys were together? Probably a little uh, complicated, right? A little complicated, yeah. but um, we have moments where we've had a good amount of us together where you could, I think it was maybe around 13, 12, 13 of us at a time, which is a lot. That still. is a lot. Um, okay, so yeah. now going back to the health, you you are are you 100% clear to fight or not yet? I think so. Okay. Well, I'm being mean? honest, I think so. Did someone so say you're good to go? Situation. Here's a situation. It's a... Uh, I was clear to take to start a training camp at the six month mark, not to fight in six months. So that's where that's where the discrepancy came with with everyone. And I think that's where everyone kind of jumped the gun a little bit. And uh, I mean, I tried. I gave it an honest try and I just couldn't do it physically. I just couldn't do it. You know, so um, last thing I wanted to do, like people know that you can get a knee surgery, you can get a shoulder surgery and you're out for what, nine to 12 months usually? That's like the, the normal time for the average person and people are making it seem like I stubbed my toe. I didn't stub my toe. I, I had a neck surgery, which connects to every single thing in my body. If I want to take a shit, if I don't shit on myself, you know, it, it, that all comes from the, the neurological side for my brain to be able to control everything. So I got to be smart here. I can't just be jumping into something and people want to say I'm sparring. I mean, I got to spar to see where I'm at to see if I can fight. Mm -hmm. So if I spar and I see that I'm having trouble Okay, so that makes sense. People are making it seem like I'm like I'm ducking a fight. I want to fight the guy. I get paid to fight the guy. I want to make money. I haven't got paid in almost what seven months now. So yeah. it'd be nice to make some money, and uh, I can't wait to do it when shove it up everyone's asses and have them just, you know, I'm gonna be so petty, man. It's gonna it's gonna be. Um, <laughs> I like to be. I try to be humble about my wins. You know, um, I always talk shit before the fights with all my opponents, but I always be humble about the wins. But this one. This is something different where I just feel like it's deserved, you know? Um, and either way, if, if it, things, knock on wood, things don't go my way and he decides to do the same thing, that's fine. I'll eat it. I'll eat it. I'm, I'm a man of my word. I back up my words and, I, you know, I have no problem, you know, 
eating shit if I lose, you know? But at the same time, I really do in my heart feel like I'm better than this guy. And I can't wait to just have everyone just suck it. Well, you know what's funny about this is that I feel like, look, uh, people can debate what happened, um, the aftermath, all that. At the end of the day, regardless of what happened in that fight, take that fight away, you're still one of the top two, three best bantamweights on the planet, and yet people talk about you with all due respect to me, like you're me. Like you're some Joe Schmo who fights for a li- like who pretends to be a fighter. Like you're still freaking Aljamain Sterling. And I feel like at this point, people have forgotten that and your integrity is questioned and your skills are questioned. And that must drive you nuts. Like you're still a freaking UFC champion, fighter, contender who who submitted Corey Sanhagen in 90 seconds. Like that's absurd stuff. And yet I feel like that yeah. has all been forgotten. You know what I'm saying? No, it, it drives me nuts. I think that's where... You know, I I don't mind the banter from fans, but I think that's where I kind of get a little crazy where I'm just like, am I crazy? Or are these people just ridiculous, unreasonable people? And that's really what it is. So it's um you got to kind of take it with a grain of salt. And at the end of the day, I, I'm comfortable in my own skin. I know what I've done. I know what I've accomplished. And uh, I'm, I'm proud to say I have I'm tied for the second most wins in Benway history. And hmm. one of my wins doesn't even count because it was at 140 with Burrell between three other people, the, the one guy is TJ Dillshaw and I'm right there tied with two, I think two or three other people. So it's like to discredit me is like, then, then who deserves credit? You know what I mean? So uh, at the end of the day, like I said, it's not like I stubbed my toe. Uh, this didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't throw the knee. You can say I acted all you want. You never been needing the head like that unexpectedly. It's like someone running up behind you in the street and just cold clocking you. You just, it's unexpected. You're not ready for it. You know? So at the end of the day, people can say what they want. I know what I've accomplished. And, um, uh, I'm excited to get back and remind the world who I am and what I've done and continue that, that, that ascension with my win streak and to cement my name in history as one of the best, if not the best man away in the world to ever do it in modern day history. You know, I'm obviously you got Dominic Cruz and, and, uh, uh, Uriah Faber. They don't count their WC wins, which they right. should to, in all fairness, like how they did for strike force. Yeah. They should count those wins. Um, but those are the guys I'm chasing, man. I'm chasing to make history. And, and that's really it. I, I'm financially secure. I'm I'm living a good life. I'm happy where I've come from. I was just talking to my best friends from from Uniondale, and I just go, it's just crazy. We're all in the group chat talking about the fight, and they all saying what I should do. It's always funny when I talk with my friends because yeah. they all become coaches. It's actually hilarious. <laughs> um, but I was just telling them, I was like, dude, man, I'm just happy where I'm at. When I look back at it, to to know that a young kid from Uniondale, the stuff that we used to do growing up, and now this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm at in life. No one could ever take that away from me, and I'll, and I'll forever be proud of that. You know, so at the end of the day, um, I might talk shit, I might whatever. People might not like the things that I do, but uh, not everyone's for everybody. And at the end of the day, you still got to respect what I've done and accomplished in, this, in the sport and in this lifetime. So a couple of weeks ago, we had TJ Dillashaw on the show, and uh, he says that he's been promised a title shot next, which I think makes things a yeah. little bit iffy. I know he's coming off knee surgery. He doesn't think, he went out and said, essentially, in so many words, he doesn't think that you will fight again. He thinks at the time- I saw it. You saw that, okay. Uh, what, what, yeah, because what people were tagging me and shit. Yeah. So I what was like, make- let me see what this <laughs> Muppet said, this Pillashaw guy said. And- uh, What'd you make oh, of yeah, that? And I want to say, before we go to this, TJ, uh, people, were, people were treating my resume as if I'm like, I just came on the scene. And I know disrespect to these guys, like the, the Paul brothers, like- I, I've been in this game for a very long time. I've been with the UFC for seven years, you know, seven years of hard work. Um, and I'm saying like the, the Paul brothers aren't working hard, you know, they're, but they're great promoters and they obviously don't have the skill set as people who dedicated almost their entire livelihood to do, doing what they're kind of taking advantage of. But it's good for the sports, bringing eyes. But at the end of the day, you have to respect people who are, or you should respect people who are actually going out there and putting in the work and trying to put on for themselves and are competing against the best guys in the world. I think that's, fair for anyone even all the, the the russian people or the even the americans who talk shit and give me the clown emojis i i just don't get it it's like you would just think that i've done nothing in this sport but to go to tj i, I think he's ill-advised there's been other people who've had the surgery that actually came back and compete alan joban being one of them and a couple of other guys that actually came back and competed and alan joban is a lot older than i am so for him to come back and even win a couple fights that's pretty damn impressive so i like to think that i'm in a very good spot Um, Based on what my doctors have told me, my situation where my other disc was also affected, the C5, C6, my C6, C7 is the one I got replaced. The C5, C6 is getting better because of me getting that replacement and it's straightening out my, um, it's fixing the curvature in my cervical spine, Mm. you know? So 
I'm in a good spot, man. I, like I said, I've been living with a lot of pain for a long time. And people were saying, like, why'd you decide to get the surgery now? I couldn't train. If I can't train, how am I going to fight? So it's not like I would pick the convenient time to get the surgery. I picked the time to get the surgery where it was like, yo, I can't do anything else physically. So what other option am I left with? It's like I'm beating a dead horse saying this because these people hear what they want to hear. And then they're going to say what they want to say anyway. It's like talking about the vaccine and everything. You know, people believe what they want to believe when it comes to politics. They believe what they want to believe. No matter what you say, it could be showing them proof and facts right in front of their face. The guy could be telling you the truth and who came up with the argument. And people will still have some type of way to go around it and say, nah, nah, that just can't be true. Like, this is the world that we live in. The social media world that we live in. People are just nuts. Nuts. Okay, so at this point, you you say you sort of maybe been clear, but like when... Do you think you'll get the full clearance? You're good to spar. You're good to do everything. Like there's nothing holding you back. There's nothing holding me back. Oh, you could spar now. I stop. I stop. I stop sparring so that I can focus on the things that I need to focus on to get myself back. Okay. So now that that time has passed, I got another month of PT and and uh, rehab and everything, getting the strength back in November, and from there we start our training camp. And so you're. So hope- I'm, I'm slowly building. I'm still training. I'm training with Moreno and those guys training with my guys back here in New York and um, things have been going well. And if you ask me the type of trainings and the stuff I've been doing to people in the room, I, I, I like, I like where I'm at now compared to where I was before, where I was kind of struggling to get through the practice sessions. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's, that's the different mentality and the energy shift where I'm like, I think I'm back, baby. I'm, I, I'm back. I'm ready to go. Nothing holding you back. Nothing hold me back, baby. Nothing holding me. Not even the Island Boys, baby. I, so, so I, I hear January is full. Obviously, with Nganu on the card and Moreno on the card, February still up in the air. So it seems like maybe February, March. It's it's conceivable that this happens. I don't want to wait till March. Okay. I, if I could fight this guy tomorrow, I I would. But uh-huh. I mean, obviously, it doesn't work like that. I just have to. I have to really make sure I get myself prepared for five rounds again, which is not easy. You can't do that overnight. Um, but I'm just I'm just eager. I'm just eager to get back out there, you know, and now I'm more eager to see what I could. I finally got questions answered about Pideon's abilities and his skills. He's the real deal. I just think I'm better. I truly do, do just think I'm better than him still. And uh, I think January or February, I think whatever happens, they might do a third title fight on that, on that card. Or if they have other obligations, they might push it to February. Hopefully not March. That would just be. Uh, I just would not want to wait a year, you know, another year layoff. I had my wrist surgery after um, beating Pedro Munoz and I had a way to come back to fight Corey. You know, just that time period, it's just lost time. You know, I'm I'm not getting younger. I need to make as much money as I can while I can in my prime, use this vessel as best as I can. And um, that's the name of the game. Get out while you still can and while you still have your brain and your health intact. Yeah. And uh, that's that's what I plan on and intend to do. So. I don't want to be one of those guys who's hanging around when they're 40. I mean, kudos to Glover Teixeira, but man, you see a lot of his past fights, you know, congrats to him to be able to stick through that. But man, those last few fights have been rough. Right. Like, what does that do to you in the future? I mean, granted, you can't put a price tag on someone's quality of life. Whatever is good for him is good for him. Doesn't mean that it's going to be good for me too. You know what I mean? So that's the way I kind of judge things and and kind of measure where I'm at and what I want to do with everything that's going on, if that makes sense. Yeah, and, and no fear that they're going to go to TJ. He said he was promised a title shot. You're Fuck next. Fuck TJ. Fuck TJ. Let TJ wait. That bitch-ass motherfucker could wait. Just like that. Just like that. That guy's a fucking cheater. He had a close fight. A lot of people still don't even think he won the fight by hugging another man by the waist. At least I actually go for submissions. I think there's people that deserve to unify the belts that have the belts, right? Am I Am I crazy? How do you not unify the belts to try to, that makes no sense. Let TJ wait. And it's not my fault. He got his knee ripped off in that fight with Sanhagen, you know, that's on him. So it is what it is. He's got to wait just like everybody else has to wait their turn. He waited two years already, right? He could wait another couple of months. Hmm. Final thing. Uh, do you want to send a message to Peter Jan? No, the, the only message I really have to say, and I, I know people probably say, Oh, you should take advantage of the spot, but I, I don't, I don't hate the guy. I think he's a good competitor. I still think he's a dirty fighter, though. Um, just check his track record with all his other fights. Um, I really do look forward to the chess match. I think this is going to be a really good close close battle. And I know like, once I get him down, I'm not going to make the same mistake I did 
where I came in not eating food and coming in, taking them down and then trying to throw hammer fist instead of controlling the position, doing what I do. I, I, I kind of got ahead of myself. I know what I'm going to do in this next one. And uh, I think the blueprint is there. I'm a hard, hard fighter to hit. He hit me a lot in that last one. It's not going to be the same fight. You even look at the Moreno uh, Figueredo fight, the first one and the second one, completely different fight. One was completely dominated um, domination. The other one was a lot closely contested. You know what I mean? So no two fights are the same when both guys get to actually prepare for each other. So I'm, uh, I'm excited for the future and uh, may the best man win. And I know that's going to be me. So everyone that keeps doubting me, put your money up and go get your betting slips. Cause I guarantee you, you're going to go home sad. I can't wait. By the way, did you notice Joe Martinez said he was a two time champ after he won? Did you notice that? I, I mean, technically, yes, because interim champions are considered actual champions because they get pay per view points. So for the next one, we both we would actually be getting paid. That's good. Um, you know, which is good. So all these all these people talking shit, man, behind the, the those thumb pushes. I, I just hope these guys actually pay to watch the fight and don't try to go do no streaming shit. You talk all this shit, put your money where your mouth is to, to see who's actually going to win, you know? So, um, that's, that's pretty much it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the future. This is one of the best divisions, and I'm proud to say that I'm at the top of it. You know, that not everyone can say that. Not everyone can say they actually fought for a title. Not everyone can say they actually won a title, albeit not the way I wanted to. But at the end of the day, I know who I am. I'm comfortable in my own skin, and I know what I'm capable of. This is going to be tremendous. I'm happy to hear you're okay. Thank you, as always, for doing this. Appreciate it. I think a lot of people were curious to hear how you felt about Saturday. And uh, for now, most important, good luck to Ray Janelle. This Saturday, oh, MSG. Yes, tune That's in. That's big time stuff. Will you be in his corner? Yes, sir. Let's go, Ray Janelle, yes, Bobby Green. That's a fun one. Can't wait. MSG. The fighting Owls are back, baby. The Let's Island go. Boys are back, <laughs> baby. <laughs> the Long Island Boys. We're gonna keep on going, cause we're Long Island Boys. I'm gonna make more noise. <laughs> oh, I like. Well, look at a little freestyle from Aljo. Aljo, thanks for the time, terrible. man. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. We'll, we'll look right, forward guys. to it. Thank you so much. Uh, there he is, Aljamain Sterling, the bantamweight champion of the UFC, giving us a little freestyle. Man, everyone loves the freestyle. Everyone loves the Island Boys.